All right, welcome back to day seven, I believe, of day code. 100 days of machine learning code. Love this mug, good stuff. All right, let's get to work. So where we left off yesterday is we made a submission and didn't do too bad. Uh, got a score of 0.91 and I'm pretty sure, let's check out how it's evaluated, the metric that we're using is, is the accuracy. So the percentage of images that you got correct. Let's look at the leaderboard. So we want to maximize towards a one score, which means that you get everything right. And then well, I'm all the way down here. You know, 2,000 people more. Uh, so we got 91% of the images right, which is awesome, actually. That's a really good score. So, and that was just with a sequential model, which is what we were using here. So I'm going to create another model. We will rename this model sequential. And actually not going to have my cell be right there. It's our way to delete a cell. Oh, wait. Just move it down there. All right. Name that model sequential. And this way we can differentiate between the ones that we're using. And this makes sense now why we're using metric. Uh, our metric is accuracy. And don't really need this. I'm going to keep that in here. And once we run this again, see if we actually need this loss. Anyways. Um okay so let's take out loss and just see what happens because I, I don't see any reason why we need loss I'm just going to run all the cells how we can do that and then, so yeah, that was a cool, I'm glad that I got that good score. So let's go back. I opened up the documentation for a convolutional neural net. This is what we're going to want to use, which is why I'm not sure if we're technically under. Yeah. So it talks about building convolutional neural net for this exact data set that we're doing, which is awesome. Um, it makes sense. So I'm going to go try and build this model now, now that I've had some experience getting through it, and we'll see how that goes. If I need help, then they have this explanation right there. It's a convolutional neural net. So how do we start off? Here is uh, CNN. I want to go to the documentation. Show me how we start this. It's about models. I understand this process now because we went through that in like a couple of videos ago. I'm just wondering. Let's check out the very top of what we're doing. Um. Oh, so we're actually using TensorFlow layer now. Convolutional con 2D. So how about we look up that documentation, come to understand that better. Did they set that to, yeah. So that was set to a layer two. Got an error. Oh. Yeah, you do need loss. No, we'll run that too. All right. So 
our model CNN is going to be equal to tf.layers.con2d. Our inputs are going to, okay, so we did reshape our input data last time into a shape of 28 by 28 by 1 because it was just a grayscale image. What's the difference between capital con? Uh, oh, it's just a class. It's not a model that you can create. Okay. And what we're going to do is just pass in our data. And our X train looks like this. All right. For this, we'll reshape x train equals np dot reshape oh, I think it's just x train dot reshape and then 28281 so that's our inputs what does it mean by filters I was just seeing if it was pouring outside uh, I'm going to refer to the curious one, which is a bit different, so hopefully I can learn more from it. I like, it's a little bit more straightforward in curious it just tells you like this is sequential which I the way that I understand you can basically build anything with this and then the different layers are going to be what you need to solve your problem <laughs> so what's the filter filters equals 32 Applies 32 5 by 5 filters. So if we do 25 times 32, yeah. Oh, whoa. Alright, so if you look here, that's what we were also using on this side too. And I had no idea why we were doing that. Uh, but I think this one was actually using 3 by 3 filters instead of 5 by 5 filters. So that's 800 pixels. And then I just want to see. We're doing 28 by 28, 784, so it's a little bit over. Interesting. So these are just all the layers. Definitely a lot more verbose than we were doing before. And then the... Okay. We're going to go through this. I wish it was an MNIST, but they don't have any other actual code up. Anyways. Filters equals 32. And then for this one, try 3 by 3. See if that works. I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, that's not what I want. I want to see the calculator. So we have 784 pixels, give you 32 times 9. Hmm. I'm not sure, that's probably not how you calculate how much it's doing. Change that back to 5 by 5. What does padding mean? Yeah, this is what I need. It's 
post we'll get a lot more into that. Okay, so the stride is how much the filter revolves over the input volume, so that's how much it moves over by pixels. So this stride is just one, so it's going to move over one. And then I imagine it goes like this, so it moves one over in each column, and then it goes down another row and then keeps on doing that. Would that make sense? If you do that... So if we increase the stride, the output volume decreases because we're moving over more, which makes sense. So it's capturing more area per stride, and you're going to get different things, but more likely to be different. Perceptive fields shifting by two units now. All right, now for padding, we're getting that. Feel free to pause the video and read this too. Sort of just trying to get my head wrapped around it. Okay, so it's just basically adding these fake values around the image. It's actually really easy. <laughs> Pulling layer is referred to downsampling. Oh yeah, well yeah, I saw that the other day. I think this is actually the image that I saw. It's a really good tutorial. I'm gonna save it. Dropout layers. Drop out just basically make sure that it's not overfitting by dropping out a random set of activations and later. All right, so it's making sure that, I think basically what that means is that you're gonna give the layer random like zeros and change the weights on purpose and you wanna make sure that you're still getting like nearly the same results because if you're not, then your model is overfitting and it's like only these values will give you what you need.
That was really good. It's actually like a really good guide. A deep, my boy. Okay. Now that we know that, I think I would imagine that padding. What is same padding to F? If you would like ask here, I approve of this. Foot width is 13. Our stride is 5. Trace is pad evenly left and right. Oh, okay. But if the amount of columns is be added as odd, it will add the extra column to the right. Okay. I understand the same now. So valid actually drops it. That way you can get a full stride in. Interesting. Nice. Dude, that's so good. I'd just be curious to see what this kid's resume is. He used Flask for that, and then went to Heroku. Huh. Wow. He actually wrote for O'Reilly. That's impressive. Okay. Kid's better than me. Alright, cool. Good for him, man. All right, so now we have an understanding of what same padding does. And then we're using activation layer of ReLU. Does it say specifically why? No. Did this say specifically why people use ReLU? OK. After each conv layer is convention to apply a nonlinear layer which is ReLU, immediately after its purposes of layers to introduce nonlinearity. Basically, it's just ReLU. So ReLU is, ReLU is better because it allows network to train a lot faster. So it just basically helps with speed and it also seems like, how long is this paper? All right, I'm reading this tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to print that out and read it. Uh, basically, from what I understand, one, I think the biggest thing is performance, but also you just have a, it's better because like this is just a linear operation, right? Uh, at least up here what you're doing and so what you want to do is there a bug in here okay uh, what you want to do is use ReLU because it's not linear so you sort of change up the uh, style of it it does I think it helps with overfitting I don't know I just realized I have steam up and it's probably been going for so long bye bye all right
padding the same. And then our activation is Relu. tf.nn.relu. Cool. CNN1. So I don't necessarily need to have model in front of here. CNN1 and then one equals tf dot layers dot max pooling now I'm getting the breeze in from outside feels good and it doesn't sound like it's pouring rain out it's all positive today our inputs equal conv1 Alright, that makes sense. So I understand what the inputs are now. It's our data. Or the previous layer. Then our pool says. There's specific. Oh, wait, but we're using the same data set anyway, so it works. Trides 2. Changing up the music. Alright, so now we go to our, convolute, our second convolutional layer. It's con 2D. I'm understanding how this is working. So even without looking at the documentation, I know that the inputs are going to equal pool 1. And that are filters. I believe this should be 64 now. Yes. And we do keep the same kernel size. I was really happy that I knew that the filters were going to be that value. And we're using the same padding. And then an activation of Relu again. Cool. It's a small pool layer. Pool two equals tf dot layers dot max pooling two D and I'm getting this will be inputs and then I know this is going to be my CNN two and then we're gonna have a pool size of the same, I believe. Unless we're changing it up. No, it's the same. Did we go over why the pool layer w was what it was? Okay, yes. So it's, okay. I get it. I understand. Pooling just makes it smaller. And then what did the filter do? Our filters are size. Our filters are little magnifying glass. That's how I like to think of convolution neural nets is like a magnifying glass that goes over the image. Still not raining. Okay. Feels good though. It's cold outside. Okay. <laughs> Pull size and then strides equals two. And this is where we use a dense layer instead of just repeating this process. I wonder is there a specific reason why we do that? So it's a thousand twenty-four neurons with dropout, so it helps regularize it, and it also brings all these layers together. Okay. 
Interesting. Jumpsuit, jumpsuit, cover me. <laughs> okay. So in this case, we're actually needing to reshape our pool two. I'll reshape, and then we're shaping it to this, but I'm not quite sure why we're using the, okay. So let's think about this. Seven by seven makes sense, does it? No, because we're using kernel size of five by five. The filters, the 64 does make sense. I understand that. What is 64 times 7 times 7? It just seems like an arbitrary number. Not quite sure. <laughs> oh, they explain it. Okay. So let's go down to the dense layer. So our batch size Okay, so the first one is our batch size. So that's going to go over it for us. So uh, that's going to decide which is the best number to do. Each example has seven pool two. So I think after this pool two layer, we actually reduce the image down to seven. An image that's seven wide, seven in height, and number of channels, which is, hmm, not sure about what the channels are. Has shape. Yep. So that makes sense. I don't know why we have to reshape it, but. Oh, you know what, though? It may not have this negative one. So I think what... Oh, okay. So I think this reshape automatically does this for us. So it takes this amount of features, which is 3,136, and puts them into batch sizes, even an even amount of batch sizes for us, so as to not have us have to do it. Cool. Okay. Slowly getting there. Understanding more. Definitely no more than I did when I started. So now we flatten that. I'm just going to call it flatten. Then our dense layer. TF.layers.dense. This connects all of our neurons. Changing that. Got to find the right music. Okay. Units are equal to 1024. I want to go back and read if there's anything on why we actually chose 1024. And then we implement our dropout layer to help normalization make sure that the model does not overfit and put equal dense we 
ready for 0 0.4 training So we actually said that that we're training it, apparently? Don't know. Alright, and then our logits, which is number uh, predictions. So our logits equal tf.layers.dense, inputs equal dropout, units equals 10. Makes sense. So we're taking in the dropout layer, and then we're saying that there's going to be uh, 10 units that we're going to output. And then I think this dense forces it to go into 1024 pixels from 3136, I think. All right, let's go down here, and I want to see why we're using 1024 units. The number of neurons, so my bad, we're not actually lowering this down to pixels. We're lowering it. We're just setting how many neurons we're going to have. So I wonder if adding more neurons to this would help, since we have dropout to help with overfitting. Uh, so we do have to set this model to training mode, or else dropout won't do anything. Alright. Now we're going to generate predictions. Returns raw values. Let's convert into two different formats that our model can return. Huh, that's interesting. So softmax, I imagine, is probabilities, yep. And then argmax is going to use, would, yeah, whichever has the highest raw value. So go back up here. Let's look where argmax is. So I'm just going to go through this. It's actually going to be cool to see uh, how it's generalizing this, like what's the probability, even though that's not what we're aiming for. I think it'll be cool to see what the probabilities are. Plus, hey, it's worth it. Probabilities, tf.mn.softmax, logits. Evaluation metrics.
Alright, so how do we get through this before? Ah, so we were using cures. Which, now I'm liking a lot. Intensor flow just seems... Tricky. So like, what do I even call? We'll compile our predictions into a dictionary. So it's returning it. Ah, uh, it's just like, give me my answers. Just tell it to train. Mode equals tf dot estimator dot mode keys dot predict, which we want to do. Tf dot estimator. I feel like if I knew more, I'd appreciate TensorFlow more because it gives you more options, but I'm going to lean towards carries being the main thing that I use. At least for a while until I learn more. Cross entropy labels equals labels. Logits equals logits. So if our mode equals train. Waiting for this coffee kicking. <laughs> Tired. TF to train dot gradient descent. Okay, so we're using gradient descent to minimize our loss with a learning rate of 0 0.01. There we go. And then our train operation is going to be our optimizer dot to minimize. And I assume, yep, we're going to want to minimize our loss. Our global. If I can spell it right, our global step equals tf dot train dot get to global step. And then that's the end of that. tf dot estimator dot estimator. Are we in a function? Yeah. I'll uh, make this into a function once we get there. So for training, then our estimator spec is mode equals mode. Loss equals loss. Train op equals train op. And this is talking about accuracy. I'm not quite sure. By evaluation, I mean I guess that still means that we're like training it or that we're done training and we just want to test it out so labels will equal our labels I don't know where are our labels let's pass through the function Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I get it. We're just, oh, but we don't have our labels. So this does not matter. TF dot estimator. Well, unfortunately, we will not be able to get that. I just want to test out my results. That's all I want. TensorFlow. Make it so difficult. Hmm. Mod mode. Equals mode. Our loss. Equals loss. Eval metric. Ops equals eval metric. Ops. 
And that's it. Now, I'm definitely going to have to resize the layer. I don't expect it to end that way. It's going to tell me unexpected and done everywhere. Oh, my be. My be. Line 57. I don't know which line's line 57, boy. Training mode dot train. So where are we saying this? Right here. Right here. I don't even think we'll need the evaluation first off. Ah, TensorFlow. Why you gotta be so complex, man? I just wanna run it. So, if oh, that's just gonna return its predictions. Who cares about this? Where's the same train? Drop out. Tf dot layers dot drop out. Input equals dense. That's true. Training mode is equal to smear dot mode keys dot train. Indeed. They include two equal signs in their documentation, but apparently it's not that. All right, so. We'll have to say xtrain dot, or tf dot reshape. Features x. What are the features? Oh, I think I need to go. Oh. X train. I guess that worked. So what am I doing? When it comes to predicting, I don't think that's problem. It's this dropout layer. Inputs equal dense. Copy this in. Eh. Uh, 
Oh, whoa. Is it saying training equals... What's going on here? Let's check out the dropout documentation. <laughs> TensorFlow, why does their documentation suck? Guys are in Google. Uh, we don't want NN, we want layers. It's mighty annoying. Our training. Whew, okay. Python Boolean, so just one. Okay, cool, so now we indent that all, go here, say def, say an NTF, and don't. All right, so we got that done. I hate TensorFlow and their documentation and everything is not working like I want it to. So we got there, and then how do we run? Training and evaluating. Create the estimator. Where do we get into predictions? Running a TensorFlow. CNN. Is there just an easier way to run this? It is so complex. See how Mr. Kaggle does it. Are you not helping me, buddy? TensorFlow is not what I thought it to be. It's not a nice guy. I guess I'm a little bit too over my head right now. So let's just try this. So we're gonna go train dot or train equals tf dot train dot atom optimizer. My learning rate equals 0 0.001. Now yeah, we'll suck it up. And we want to minimize our loss. Three set loss. We did rec four. I'm not sure if this will work. This will be my last shot. 
for I'm going to create a Curie's CNN. Uh, and then logits is actually what we want our prediction to be. We won't have a loss though. Hmm. Yes, we will on the Y train data. Turn train? Reference before assignment. So salty. train then I'll pass it in X train so you can show and then Y train let's use the exact same names for it where is it Print white train, then print logits. Maybe logits already has all the information that we need. What if I change the sound to one? Try and. I'm trying to learn this. All right, how do I print out a TensorFlow thing? View a TensorFlow object. Tf dot session CNN TF X train Y train So tensor dot eval this and I will try and call tensor dot eval 
Yay, nay, nope. TF dot print tensor. All right, I'm taking out this print of Y train or commenting it out. There we go. Data. Tensor. My God bless. Atom nine <laughs> TensorFlow. I assume this is the Atom This is the optimizer. This is the Atom optimizer. That's so frustrating. I didn't get anywhere. I don't know if I can figure this out or if it's even worth it at this point. Did I ever try? All right, so I switch over to Curious one. I'm gonna run all the cells. Oh yeah, that's right. Just had a really long training time. That was the whole point. I just never got to see it. Why don't we let it get up here and then we'll run it at point one. Oh no, stop training. Boom, boom, boom. So it's gonna run a whole epoch. Ah, hold on. Ah? Sorry for my computer. <laughs> I just made it more difficult for my computer. Let's <laughs> change the learning rate to point 0.1. Okay, so obviously didn't get as far as I wanted to, uh, but you know, may not have been like direct progress, but past couple of days I've learned a lot, and I still learn stuff today too. It just wasn't as helpful. It's more that I do not know enough to use TensorFlow at the moment. And it's just too complex for me. And frustrating complex. Frustratingly complex. But I'm just going to stop this. Fitting. I'll actually run this and see how it goes. And that will be tomorrow's video. But, um... Yeah, uh, that's so annoying. I think I'm definitely going to stick with the Curies now because it's easier. It makes more sense, too. Like, within a sequential neural network, you're going to be adding in the layers. And I like this more. I don't know. It's just, it makes so much more sense. Oh, it's so frustrating. So, now I know not to mess with TensorFlow anytime soon. And I have a good grasp on it, too. Like, ugh, it's annoying. 
so we used yesterday I was just using the sequential model. Holy shit. That's what I was using yesterday? Like that's really small. So we could still use TensorFlow and Curies technically. Why is it starting with a flan layer though? Did I take that from this shape? Oh, I think we had to do that before to. But if we added a tf dot curies dot neuron our pawn. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey. There's some code that shows this because it's a class. These are all capital layers too. It works. Screw it, we're gonna do this. We're gonna finish out strong. Now let TensorFlow get me down. So tf .curies dot layers dot conv 2D. What we're gonna to wanna to do the filters. What image are we passing in though? Let's see how it works here. Same class. 32. So we're adding in I can't remember what that second it's our kernel size. So what's the filter then? Number of output filters. Okay, so kernel size is the, like the size of the magnifying glass width by height and then filters is how many output filters so how many like different pixels there will be interesting so like if these don't line up perfectly then they must cut off something and leave them out hmm. next thing is the strides which we just left the same. Um, doo -doo -doo. Our activation. Activation equals tf.nm.redly. We do not want softmax. Oh, I guess we do. Work? Oh, oh, that? Nope. So it doesn't like this part where we try to fit it. And that is because we go into Hello. I've been screwed. Put this at the top. Ah, okay. So TF dot curious dot lambda. So I think the only reason that you would use TensorFlow like what we're doing right now um 
is you want to use queries for like the usability and ease of use, but you want the TensorFlow more like runtime things like that allow you to have different environments for testing and training and prod. What's standardize? We already standardized our data. So if I look up Lambda on here, function to be evaluated. So let's create our own standardize. Def standardize. It's going to be data. Uh, data divided by two. 55.0. I believe that's how we did it. We did a different thing. We were centering around the mean. And we also one hand coded all the data. Standardize and then. Output shape. Oh yeah. Okay, we knew what our we want what we wanted our dot layers layers call should be a tensor not none nice so something's going on with our data can we run all the cells again I expect that we'll air out what's going on with our data before this work? <laughs> Got even more errors. Okay. Don't know what I'm doing. Let's not try and get fancy with our input. So it's saying that layers call should return a tensor. And doesn't like our dense chill. because we're using Adam after that too. Hmm. I 
player's call method should return a tensor or a list of tensors. Why does it have to reload? If I did this, oh yeah, it still does not like that. Why is it so upset about what I'm doing? <laughs> Alright, that's the point where I consult the internet. Uh, players call method should return a tensor. Your flows are making me hate everything. I think perhaps. Okay. Oh. Curious soft facts. Huh. Activation equals K dot soft max. Import curious. Right. Just be an activation function. Don't make me have to pass in stuff. All right. So what do we use as the activation on the end here? We use relu. And it wouldn't let us use softmax before. And it's still having problems with what we're doing. Change all these to just relu. I understand now that the last layer we would actually like it to be softmax because then that gives us a prediction. What is your problem, dude? Control equals get CNN model. And just, uh, why? Oh, God bless. Okay. I'm going to end this soon because I have no idea what I'm doing and it's only getting worse from here. It's only going downhill. Okay. The max pooling. Convolution. Sequential. Um, carries dot models imports sequential. 
in Lambda. Just import all these. Is it getting something passed into it? Yeah, I really don't know what I'm doing at this point, and I'm not going to make any progress. I need to step away from this. Alright, so now I know that we're going to switch over to Gears and not go back to TensorFlow, because that was annoying and ridiculous and dumb and everything in between. Oh, muy bien. Okay. It's frustrating. So tomorrow I'll start with Curious and try to improve upon this model, uh, this neural net right here, and then we'll use it to hopefully get a better score and then eventually move on to different projects because we have dog breed and tumpback whale for computer vision projects. Okay. Anyways, thanks for watching. Sorry, I didn't really do much today. I learned a lot, but part of the process, guys. Ah, oh, getting there. <laughs> uh, cool. Anyways, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, I sort of did. I tried to, at least. And yeah. There's something in my drink, it feels like. I guess not. Okay, thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow for the better face and hopefully learn more.